Hey everyone, Shashank this side. I hope everybody is doing well and safe at home. Topic for today is AWS Backup Audit Manager. So when AWS launched AWS Backup long back, the feature of reporting was missing from this particular module. Now we have something called Audit Manager where with the help of this particular service or mechanism, we can create our own reports of the backups, the restore jobs and everything. Plus, this will help us to do a compliance of our backup reports just to make sure the data protection policies meet our business requirements. Also, AWS Backup Audit Manager helps us to provide built-in compliance control. So it takes the help of AWS Config where it will try to record all the features in terms of compliance or non-compliant, right? As most of you know, AWS Config is a security tool from AWS which help us to record our configurations and give us a report that your this service like ABC service is compliant or your EBS is non-compliant. Why it is non-compliant? Because your EBS volume is not encrypted with KMS or custom key, right? So these are the things that has been integrated with AWS Backup to provide us better functionality in terms of the reporting features, in terms of meeting our standard in, from security perspective. So this audit manager is designed to automatically detect your violations of your defined data protection policies, also prompt you to take corrective actions. And with the help of this audit manager, we can continuously evaluate our backup activity, generate an audit report, show it to the management hey we are compliant from our backup perspective and there are like different features as well in terms of the backing up of your rds your storage gate for your ec2 instances and all other things but you can find all those things in my previous video i'll share the link within the description section of this particular video now this video is totally focused on how you can create a report and how you can create a framework so framework will enable you to continuously evaluate your environment. It will take the help of AWS config to record your configuration and it will show you whether your AMIs or your EBAs are compliant or non-compliant. Okay. So let's jump to our AWS backup dashboard. So this is AWS backup dashboard and guys, this is one of a good feature. I would say that AWS has implemented in terms of backing up your EC2 instances or your EBS volumes or RDS or storage gateway and the restore mechanism. Trust me guys, I have restored 20 terabytes of data within five minutes, which is nothing, right? On the database side. Okay, so for example, how we can create reports and everything. So this is my EC2 instance already created running an Apache, a default page. Now, if I go to AWS Backup, you can see on the left-hand side, we have something called Dashboard where you can create your backup plan or you can create your framework, create your reports. So as of now, two of my backups are in progress, as you can see, because this is running as part of a backup plan. Again, if you're not aware of it, I will show you how you can create a backup plan. So for example, click on Create Backup Plan. You can start with a template, a default retention duration provided by AWS like 35 day, one year, five year or seven year, or you can create your own plan. So for example, let's give this plan name as test one. Rule name again, same. Vault where your backups are getting stored. You can create your own vault. Advisable to create your own vault instead of creating or using a default from AWS so that you can apply certain number of policies on top of that. Backup frequency, daily, hourly, depend upon your requirement. Enable continuous backup, point in time recovery, which is required for that, which is again available for the RDS resources too. The default start is 5 a.m. UTC, which starts within eight hours. Now, if you want to customize that, you can do that. Make the backup start at, at your point of time. By default, it is UTC. You can convert it to your time zone. Start within one hour or two hour and complete within one hour or two hour. So the combination has to be done properly. Otherwise, your backup will be going to fail. Transition to cold storage, number of days, weeks. So this is only applicable for EFS, not for the EBS. 
okay now as you can see AWS backup only supports the tiering for EFS recovery points so that is for the cold storage retention number of days and everything you can give this as per your requirement you can copy this backup into your different region as well as part of your uh, like disaster recovery a backup to a backup kind of thing WSS is required when a third party software is running onto your system now click on create plan I'm not going to do that once you click on create it will create a plan like this let me move this now backup rules and everything will get created now which resources you have to take a backup for that you have to go to the resource assignment assign resource give the name and based upon the tag you can give the backup or resource id as you can see we have aurora dynamo db ebs ec2 efs fsx rds and storage gateway so i'm already taking a backup of my ec2 instance this is the one this is the IAM role and everything gets created with the help of uh, AWS backup once you do that resource assignment and all is done Windows VSS is disabled because it's I'm not using any third-party software okay and as per my schedule every hour the backup is happening so if you go to dashboard I believe it's still to in progress let me refresh this No. okay two completed two in progress now if you go to the jobs you can see all your completed backup status right so these two are completed these two are created it will convert the created stage into running and finally into your completed state now the main motive for this particular video is the backup reports right so here are two options create your framework we will be going to cover this after creating the backup plan now click on create reports here you can select the template backup re job report or restore or copy which what kind of report you want click on backup job report for last 24 hours give the name and everything we have two file formats one is csv one is json let's go with J uh, csv and here you can send this data to your bucket okay so for that you have to edit the bucket policy with the permission so let's copy permission and we will go to our s3 bucket now this was something i was expecting more from aws to create some set of dashboard within the uh, report section of this aws backup instead they have created this in this format like you can save your file format and send it to your s3 bucket and from there you can read your data i was expecting something on the dashboard side within the report section anyway so let's go to 2019 that's my bucket permission i guess i already have a permission but let me edit because i have copied it copy paste so as you can see I'm giving permission to my S3 bucket a full owner access and this is the report uh, backup.amazonaws.com role save changes changes done so the report will get saved within this bucket so for example if I go to objects let me actually delete this okay permanently delete Permanently delete. Then, so now I don't have any backup jobs over here or the backup report basically. So let's go to AWS backup. I have already copied the permission. Let's create a report plan. Now, as you can see, the report plan has been created. The plan has been created. How report will get created? Click on on demand report. Now it will create the on demand report. Just refresh it. It's already completed. Now the detail if you want to see select this click on view report it will go to the S3 management console so I'm into S3 again I'll go back over here I'll refresh this you can see it's backup that's my account ID that's Virginia 2021 today's date September 30 uh, 
Now this is the backup report. That's the CSV file. Let's download this file. Okay. Let's download it and let's open it. Here we go. So we have the report time, everything, account ID, region, backup job ID, created, completed, failed, depend upon what the status is coming up. If it is failed, it will show you the message. If it is completed, uh, the status will remain as completed. Type of resource, EC2, EBS, depend upon what resources you are uh, capturing as part of your backup, then all your resource ID and everything is getting and it's going into a default vault, okay? So everything is getting stored within your CSV file or JSON format. So that's how reporting mechanism works, the features that they have implemented. On the left-hand side, you can see backup audit manager. We did report, now the second part, we have to do the framework. Now, if we go to the framework, framework is a part where it will assess your backup environment, whether it is compliant or non-compliant with the help of AWS backup. So for that, if you see, monitor your data compliance with the framework, turn on resource tracking below. So you have to go to AWS config. Again, if you're not aware of AWS config, I'll share the security module videos uh, where I have completed what AWS config is, how you can do the configuration of AWS config to track your configuration resources. So everything is there in that particular video. So please go through that as because AWS config for me, I would say it's one of a very important module or service in AWS, which help you to record your changes, which help you to get, provide your compliant, non-compliant as part of the security standard. So I'm into AWS config. Now on the left hand side, there's something called settings, click on edit and we'll be going to enable the record section. Save it. So it's taking the inventory across all the environments, all the resources. So it will take time. Now, so first part is done. Turn on resource tracking below, it's done. Second part is the framework. So click on create framework, give the name test. We'll use the, you can create your own scope or you can use the recommended one, five predefined controls. What are those? We'll see right away. Click on create framework. Now framework status is active and the backup. So these are the metrics, backup recovery point, minimum retention, minimum frequency, then resources protected by the backup plan, recovery point encrypted and prevent recovery point manual deletion. So these are the things that get created while you take the default creation of your framework. So deployment status is in creating stage. Now, depend upon how heavier your account is operating with, it will take time to assess your environment. So I'm going to have this video pause once my deployment state gets into a completion phase, I will resume it back and show it to you guys. So the deployment status is completed against all the five rules. We have a non-compliant status. How? Let's see. So we don't, we don't have a sufficient data for this particular backup recovery point minimum retention evaluates if recovery retention period is at least one day. So we just have created, we don't have that much data. Same for this backup resource protected by backup plan non-compliant. Okay. Because this data is coming from AWS config. Let's see the detail compliant. So it's giving us a direction to EBS. EC2 is compliant. That's fine. So we will look at our EBS as well. FSX and everything is not in use, insufficient data, insufficient data. We don't have much data for that. So that's why these are giving us that report. Let's go to AWS config console. So this is the dashboard. Let's refresh it. Because the tracking is on, it will show us everything. Here we go, one compliant, one non-compliant. Okay, that's the rule. So if you go to the rule section, it's not showing, it will take some time to reflect over here. Okay. As you can see, these are all backup related rules get populated in the rules section. Okay. Now, if I go to the dashboard, where is the non-compliant? This is the non-compliant resource. Let's click on that. 
and you can see the non-compliant status by clicking over here as well okay so it will take you to the same console where is that there we go so why it is non-compliant let's see the volume resource is not protected by any backup plan so that's why it's showing as non-compliant so as you can see guys so if i go back to the rule again or uh, let's go to the dashboard actually and let's click on the compliant rule ec2 resource protect protected by backup plan yes because we are taking that backup and it's getting used by the backup plan that what we have created in aws backup right so if I go to the backup plan, the EC2 instance is getting created or protected by this backup plan. If you go to the protected resources, as you can see, it's creating an EMI, but it's also creating a snapshot of the associated volume. And that volume is not protected by AWS backup plan. That's why based upon the standard that AWS has created for its AWS config rule, it's a predefined rule that we have used again we can use our custom rules as well but the predefined rule we are not protecting our EBS volume the associated snapshot with our backup that's why it's non-compliant so that's it guys that's how the framework the compliance and non-compliance of your backup reports happens that's how you create your reports with AWS backup it will help to a certain extent for sure just to track down your resources whether you are up to your business standards or not from the security perspective so try it out on your account and show it to the management that this is one of the nicest feature that we have in aws backup and try to use aws backup if you are heavily loaded on aws platform if you're facing an issue please out a comment in comment section i'll be there to help you have a nice day bye bye